Hey guys, I'm coming to you today from my husband's recording studio. For those of you who don't know, my husband does voice acting. So I am in his little recording studio because this video requires a voiceover and I thought I would, you know, use his fancy recording equipment to make the voiceover as high quality as possible. So I got the idea for this video when my husband Eric got a giant hole in his pajama pants, which happens to his pajama pants like maybe once a year. He buys like fairly cheap pajama pants, but they normally normally last, I don't know, like these ones that just got a hole in them are probably like five years old. So they last him a decent amount of time. But recently what I've started doing is when he gets a hole in his pajama pants, I will cut them up and make them into shorts for myself. Because why throw out a perfectly good pair of potential cute pajama shorts for me, you know? But I was thinking, you know, even when I turned it into shorts for myself, the two leg portions of his pants are perfectly good pieces of fabric. Like maybe there's something that we could be doing with that fabric. And then I realized we have a tiny dog whose torso is about the size of my husband's leg. <laughs> so that got me thinking, what if I could turn one of the legs of his pajama pants into a cute little plaid pajama sweater for Bear? Now, Bear is a weirdly shaped dog. He's half dachshund. So we, we like to get him sweaters because he's got short fur. We live in a fairly cold state, so he gets pretty cold in the winter. But when we buy him shirts and sweaters, they don't cover his whole back at all. We have found one that gets close to covering his whole back. But I was like, it would be really cool if I could kind of custom make a sweater for him that will actually fit his weird dog body. So that's kind of the goal here. And I like to think that I'm a pretty crafty person, but I am by no means an expert seamstress or anything. So please take everything in this video with a grain of salt. This is supposed to be a no sew or low sew project. And that's because I really do have very few skills with a needle and thread, but I am creative. So what I'm basically doing here is eyeballing what I think a dog sweater should look like. And I think the final product turned out pretty well. So without further ado, I'm going to show you guys what that process looked like and how we wound up with a cute little dog sweater for Bear. Oh, okay, right, so there's me. Hi me, yeah, you're cute. Okay, whatever. So for this project, you're gonna need a pair of pants with a hole in it preferably, some scissors, some fabric glue, and possibly some elastic. So you can see here that the pants do have a hole in them. I'm really not trying to encourage you guys to go buy pajama pants for the purpose of making a dog sweater. That would cost about the same. The point here is to upcycle things that you aren't really using anymore. Now, before you get started cutting anything, one tip that I have is to take a dog sweater or shirt, if you already have one, to see exactly where you want your measurements to be. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm just lining this up with the pajama pants to kind of get a feel for how wide my dog's torso is in a normal dog sweater and see if that'll work out. You can see here that there is a little bit more fabric in the existing dog sweater, so I might have to compensate for that. Once you've got that figured out, you can start cutting. If you're gonna turn the pajama pants into shorts like I did, I highly recommend folding them in half so that you have a nice even cut across both legs. The great thing about this plaid pattern is that you can find a line that you want to follow and just cut along that line. I'm cutting as close to the hole as I possibly can because I want the shorts to be decently long, but of course you can make them however long you want. And there you go, a cute pair of pajama shorts. But that's not what we need right now. After you've cut off the shorts, you're gonna have two legs. We have a leg with a hole in it and a leg that is perfectly fine. And for some reason, I initially discarded the leg of the pants that had more fabric. I don't know why I did that. I, I'm not sure what my logic was there. Definitely start with the pant leg that has more fabric, especially if you have a bigger dog, because that just gives you more wiggle room. I got lucky because we have a pretty small dog, so the hole didn't really affect anything. But yeah, definitely start with a pant leg that has more fabric. <laughs> As you can see, the closer you get to the knee of the pants, the wider the fabric and the closer you are to the ankle, the fabric gets more narrow. This kind of reflects a dog sweater, which is more narrow towards the dog's neckline and wider as you get closer to the dog's torso. Because of this, you want to keep the neck of your model sweater aligned with the ankle of your pant leg. 
and now it is officially time to start cutting. If you made a terrible decision like me and started with a pant leg that has a hole in it, cut as close to the hole as possible because you want to have as much fabric as possible to work with. Of course, you would have more fabric to work with if you had started with a pant leg that had more fabric, but whatever, you made a terrible decision and that's just something you have to live with now. <laughs> Once you have your length of fabric a little bit shorter, go ahead and test it out on your dog just to kind of get a feel for how well it's gonna fit one thing this helped me see is that I want the seams to be on the sides of my dog, not on the bottom and top. And I also saw that there's a good amount of extra fabric where his neck is. I considered turning this into a hood, but Bear did not like that idea. Now that you have a general idea of what you want the measurements to be, line the ankle of the pant leg up with the neckline of your dog's sweater. And you can see that where the dog's belly goes, the sweater goes in a little bit. You want to do that as well. I'm giving my dog a little bit of extra belly coverage because like I said, he's a particularly long half dachshund breed. But wherever you end up deciding to cut, cut a nice straight line across the first layer of fabric. You do not want to cut both sides of the pant leg here. Then you're going to cut two very slight diagonal lines into that line in the middle to make a kind of trapezoid shape on one side of your pant. Again, you only want this to be on one side of the pant leg, otherwise you're gonna have kind of like a crop top looking sweater for your dog. You can see here that they're starting to look more similar. Our next step is to add the armholes. Now what I found worked best for me was to take the new dog sweater and put it under the model dog sweater to get an idea of where the armholes need to be. Make sure you line up the neckline for both sweaters. And I just cut circles where the armholes of the original sweater were. And I started out with fairly small holes thinking that I could just make them bigger later if I needed to. In retrospect, if you have some sort of fabric pencil, it could be really useful to draw this out ahead of time so that you get more circular armholes. But you know, it's a dog sweater, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once you've got the armholes cut out, put the sweater on your dog again, just to see how things are fitting him so far. This was a very useful step for me because it showed me that the armholes were a little bit too small. It was definitely hard to get it on to bear but I really liked the length. This was one of the first sweaters that I ever saw actually fitting him all the way down the length of his back. And while you're doing this, make sure you give your dog plenty of treats for participating. Like I said, I definitely noticed that the armholes were a bit too small for Bear, so I cut outwards towards where his back would be if he were wearing the sweater. This was the wrong decision. I thought that I was doing what the original model sweater looked like, but I was definitely wrong. If your armholes are too small, cut in towards where the dog's chest goes, not towards the back. Once you're satisfied with the length of your dog's sweater, you can start incorporating the more aesthetic features. For example, most sweaters that I see have a curved back. We can do this on our sweater very easily as well. I just cut a small hole as a marker for where I wanted the tip of the curve to be, and then cut a nice curved line down to where the belly of the sweater would be. Of course, you'll want to do this on both sides. And again, if you have lines on your fabric, you can use this as a guide to make sure that your curve is nice and even. After doing these steps, I put the sweater back on Bear and I noticed two major changes that I wanted to make. The first thing that I noticed was that the curve I had cut was not too great looking and of course would fray over time. So I decided to use some fabric glue to create a seam and prevent this from happening. When you use fabric glue, you want to make sure to test it on the fabric beforehand. Here is mine um, exploding all over me. If this happens, you can just uh, use some more of your scrap fabric to clean up the floor and your hands and your face. I think the take home message here is that old fabric glue is gonna keep doing this exploding thing on you. I shook mine really, really well, but as you can see, I keep jumping every time it does this exploding thing. After a while, it started to produce a normal fabric glue consistency. But yeah, be warned, if your fabric glue is really old, you're gonna have to use it for a bit before it starts acting like normal fabric glue. Anyway, that rant was a little bit unnecessary, but basically what I'm doing here is I'm putting fabric glue about half an inch in all the way around the curve. Once the fabric glue is on, take that half an inch of fabric and attach it to the glue in small increments so that it retains its curve shape and kind of creates this little braid looking effect. Mm -hmm. 
Then let the glue dry for 30 minutes. This next step that I'm gonna show you is optional. I decided to make kind of like a turtleneck for Bear because again, he's a weird, long, lanky dog. So his neck was not totally covered by the sweater. So I'm adding a little bit of extra fabric here to get his neck more coverage. So yeah, this stuff is totally optional, but I'm gonna show you guys anyway, just in case you wanna create kind of a turtleneck look for your dog. While the glue is drying, take some elastic and measure the neckline of your dog. Definitely be gentle while you're doing here. The elastic should not have to stretch to fit around his neck. The goal is that the elastic can stretch to fit around his head, but be nice and relaxed on his neckline. Okay, thank you, bye. Goodbye. We're going to use the other pant leg to create a sort of cinched turtleneck for the sweater. Before you do anything, make sure you turn that pant leg inside out. Then you're going to attach the two ends of the elastic together. For this step, I used a needle and thread, but of course this isn't necessary. If you want this to stay a no-sew DIY, you can definitely find fabric glue that works on elastic. I'm fairly certain that exists somewhere out there. But even if you have very, very minimal sewing knowledge like I do, that's okay because this does not have to look pretty. It's going to be completely covered up by the fabric. Sorry, this clip looks terrible. I have to hold stuff really close to my face when I'm sewing because I need glasses. I'm just passing the needle and thread through both ends of the fabric several times, triple knotting it and cutting off the remaining thread. Then take that ring of elastic and put it over the ankle of the other pant leg, which remember is turned inside out. You're going to put fabric glue about one inch in and fold that fabric over the elastic so that it creates a stretchy neckline. Like I said, put that fabric glue about one inch in on the pant leg. Then put the elastic back on and fold the fabric over and get it all nice and affixed to the fabric glue. Of course, you'll want to do this on both sides so that the fabric is completely covered. Our neckline is looking pretty good so far, but of course that's going to be way too long. We don't have a giraffe as a pet. So I put my progress so far back onto Bear to get an idea of how long I needed the neckline to be. Again, because this is a nice plaid fabric, I just kept a mental note. I wanted to cut along this green line here. Of course, if you don't have a plaid fabric, you can use a fabric pencil or even make a small incision with your scissors to remind yourself where you need to cut. Discard the remaining fabric and now you have your little turtleneck. To attach this to the body of the sweater, you're going to want to turn it inside out and align the seams with the seams on the sweater's body. You're attaching the outside of the turtleneck to the outside of the body so that when everything's all nice and right side out, you can't see the seam very well. Make sure everything is nice and aligned and put fabric glue on the outside of the body of the sweater. Then press down the outside of the neck of the sweater to that fabric glue. Flip it over and do the other side. And you'll want to get the corners of the circle as well. I know circles don't have corners, but I guess when you're flattening circles, they kind of have corners. The, the point is there's a little tiny section that doesn't really get glue. Make sure that gets glued too. You don't want little tiny holes in your dog's sweater, except the armholes, obviously. Wait 30 more minutes for everything to dry and then you can flip the neckline inside out and you have a cute little dog sweater. You can see here that it's fairly similar to the one that we bought from the store. The necklines are in about the same place in relation to those armholes, but instead of a hood, we added a bit of a turtleneck. Since my dog is longer, the sweater of course is longer and the armholes are a little bit bigger. Now I want to talk about the armholes. Like I said earlier, I should not have cut towards the dog's back. In these clips, you can see why. I think it's fine, but it does make Bear's sweater look kind of like a muscle shirt or maybe like he was wearing a normal sweater and he just like flexed his big beefy dog arms and ripped the sleeves off, which I find hilarious. But of course, if you want it to look like really professionally made, you don't 
don't want the sleeves to be going all the way up here on your dog. So if you notice that the armholes are too small, definitely cut in towards the chest. I cannot stress that enough. But overall, I'm proud of how this turned out. Bear's been wearing this sweater all day and he really seems to like it. I think it looks cute. I think it'll be really nice around the holidays because it's red and green plaid. And I'm just really happy that we have a sweater that is nice and long and fits him well. I'm also just proud that I took a pair of pants that was gonna be thrown away and turned it into a pair of shorts for myself and a nice little sweater for Bear. The point of this video for me is not to encourage you guys to go buy pajama pants so that you can turn them into to a dog sweater. The point that I'm trying to make is that just because something seems fairly useless, like not even good enough to donate anymore, doesn't mean that you have to throw it away. Upcycling is a really good way to get further use out of something that would otherwise be trash. And honestly, it's really fun. I, I had so much fun with this project. I love doing creative stuff like this. So yeah, definitely let me know if you guys try this project or even something similar. I love hearing about really cool upcycling projects. So stay tuned for more content about upcycling stuff and uh, whatever else I find interesting. <laughs> if you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you know someone who has a dog and might wanna try this project, maybe send it to them and subscribe because I'm putting out videos every other Friday. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.